Hola, Sully Man here, uh, bringing you new, uh, bringing you a new tutorial today um, on how to use the Google search bar. Just kidding. Uh, in all seriousness, we're gonna work on pulling out assets today, graphic assets. Uh, you know, whether it's pulling people from backgrounds or uh, water splashes or flames. Um, I chose to kind of work with flames today, so I'm gonna look for fire. I do a Google search for fire. Go to images and you're gonna see something pretty consistent here um, it's kind of a no-brainer you know flames are intense on black backgrounds you know when it's dark out the flames brighter you know during the day flames you're not really gonna see them all that much so um, one cool thing is that it makes life so much easier when things are in a single color background that's why you have green screens you know um, your actors are acting out on a green screen and you can key out the green later uh, and basically just pulling the actors out um, and leaving transparent background. That's kind of works the same way, um, you know, when you're working within channels in Photoshop. And uh, so today we're going to pick something. Uh, we're going to look around, and like you can see, you can see certain things like this. I mean, these these look like snapshots. You know, you can kind of see within here. You know, there's the the fireplace background. So I mean, you can pull that stuff out. We're going to look for something a little easier today just to kind of get you started to give you an idea how to work with um, pulling things out in channels. So this is a seemingly a fairly easy pull here. Um, mostly a solid background, watermark, and um, we're just going to focus on the flame. So what I'm going to do is right click, copy image. I'm going to head into Photoshop, hit File New. Um, and what's great, it's going to copy the dimensions from where we copied the image. So. You know, the resolution's at 72, and you can always bump that up later. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. And I'm using shortcuts, so I'm not going to go through those. There's plenty of videos online. You can find tutorials on how to, uh, you know, the hotkeys for Photoshop, or even just do another Google search. Uh, so anyways, we pasted in our image. Um, you know, no poll's going to be perfect, so you're always going to have to do a pre- and post-touch-ups. So obviously, we don't want to have this... Um, uh, the watermark in there again if you're using somebody's stuff ask for permission buy the stock this is just for educational purposes I'm not going to be using this myself uh, again you can tweak things and, and use them that's fine um, but uh, you know do it the right way uh, so anyways you can either go here and paint that out with black you know what you're gonna do is just grab your brush I'm gonna do a little soft brush whoops wrong color and now I have my right color. You can paint it out there, or you can do it within channels. We'll go ahead and do it within channels. I'm going to undo what I just did. Head over to the channels. Now, when you're in channels, what you're trying to look for is contrast. And contrast is your whites versus your blacks. Um, you know, you want a good mix of both. Um, sometimes extreme brights aren't good. In this case, we're looking at a red channel. Flame, generally, it's oranges, yellows, reds. So your red channel is going to be pretty intense. You can see you're not getting a lot of detail versus the the green. It's a good balance. You got blacks, you know, you got some whites in there, and we can always boost that. The blue, you're losing a lot, you know. And again, you can use either one you want. It's personal preference, but I'm gonna go with the green today. You know, the red's a little too bright. You know, the blue's uh, not enough. We want this this perfect porridge um, that the bears left. So now what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna do. Um, some some editing to this so we're gonna be working with curves or levels whatever your preference is um, you know and maybe some brush work so here I'm just gonna brush out the uh, watermark I'm gonna go within levels um, it's a quick adjustment if you want a softer tonal range use curves uh, but we're we're dealing with protect production time so now what you're gonna do is if you zoom in you can see some JPEG artifacting from the compression, um, super pixelated because it's 72 DPI, but uh, you know, I'm not going to worry about that now. So you can you can color pick stuff. I like to start by getting my whitest white and clicking on that with the white, and it'll boost it just a little bit. And then my blackest black will do the same thing. And then from there, I'm just going to kind of pull the bars until I'm removing a lot of that that background noise, um, and that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit OK. Zoom out a little bit and just kind of check areas. Um, you know, there's there's some 
some artifacting going on there. So what I'm going to do now is, you know what, I'm going to blur this just a little bit, just to kind of, we'll just do a Gaussian blur. <clears throat> it's a little too much, so we're just going to nag a little bit, smooth things out. That looks pretty good. Back out, and again, it's personal preference. It's all relative to your work and, and what your needs are. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you how to, you know, what your taste should be, but um, just a kind of general idea of where to go with things. So now, when you're within channels, if you notice something, I'm going to hold the control button. Um, it should be Apple or Command. Uh, I forget. I haven't been on an Apple machine in a while, but I'm going to hold Control and I'm going to hover above the thumbnail of this channel, and you can see the cursor adds a little um, marquee box and what that means it wants to turn this into a selection what's going to be selected you ask the white um, every, anything white within a channel is essentially a selection so I'm gonna hold control and I'm gonna click and as you can see the marching ants are there and uh, I have a selection of all the white and it's actually the select with the tonal ranges so anything from white to grays until it reaches solid black will be selected. So I have that selection. I'm going to head back over to my layer. And then what I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to uh, hit Control and J to duplicate that selection. So Control and J will duplicate just the selection. And then I'm going to turn off the layer that we pulled from. So now we have layer 2. It's an asset and I can move it around. It's great with no background. I can turn the background off. You can see it's transparent. Again, you're always going to have to do some post tweaking as well. So, you know, we've lost a lot of color. I generally like to duplicate a couple times, merge them together. And then I'll head over to my image adjustments. Um, vibrance probably will do enough here. Just knock up the vibrance and hit up the saturation, get some more of those oranges back in there. And we're pretty much good to go. If I uh, hit control I to invert my background, I'll be on black and that's a, that's a pretty good pull. It's a nice bit of flame and there's tons of stuff you can do with it. Now with the um, <clears throat> illusion of movie, movie magic and uh, all that, I've gotten a file set up with a baseball. That seems to be uh, a pretty popular thing to do is throw some flames on a base behind a baseball. I'm going to head back into Photoshop and use my move tool to drag, hover over my Illustrator icon and drop it into my file. Um, it's got a white background. I'm not going to worry about that now. Again, you can import it as a TIFF if you want. You know, there's, there's plenty of ways to import graphics into this with transparent backgrounds. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you can move it around like that. If you don't want to do it that way, you can do it the re reverse way. Uh, if you want to be working in a raster program instead of, you know, working within the vector. You know, it's personal preference. But uh, we'll do it reverse here. Crop it in. Go into Photoshop. <coughs> Wait for my slow computer. Okay, let's back that out a little bit. Let's give us some breathing room. Change the background to black. Go ahead and paste my baseball in. I'm going to use it as a smart object so it keeps you know the data. That's a vector asset anyway, so we won't be any, losing any um, data. Uh, and then we can use our flames. We'll duplicate because we want to work constructively. Um, and then uh, let's go into, let's say, Warp. And we can kind of play around with these flames. Move them around how we want. Can bend a little bit. Now if we turn everything sideways, we got a baseball flying through the air. Hang on just a moment. Computer loves going slow, especially when I'm doing tutorials. And uh, there you have it. Baseball flying through the air with flames. Uh, it's a little distorted, but again, it's personal preference. Um, my suggestion is if you're going to load um, or export the flame assets or whatever assets you're working with into uh, vector software like Corel Draw or um, Adobe Illustrator, save it as a TIFF with transparency. Um, you know, with that, you're good to go. You know, once you import it in, it'll be on a transparent background. You won't have to worry about white being brought over. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do that. Um, 
you can see here. I'm just going to kind of resize the document to fit the asset. Um, you can do that easily by holding control like I showed you and clicking on the thumbnail of the layer. And go to image crop. It will actually crop everything that's uh, selected and size the box accordingly. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn the background off. <clears throat> go to file, save as, and just head over to TIFF. Um, we'll go into documents and I have a little clip art area. We can go to flame. Label it flame. Hit save. And then over here we want to make sure this box is checked. Save transparency. I'll go ahead and discard the layers because I don't need them. Uh, you don't really have to, I mean, if you want to compress this, go ahead. Um, I wouldn't compress it. I'm going to keep it as high quality as possible. Hit OK. You're all set. Let's head over back to Illustrator. Let's knock that one out. Oh, you know what? Let's keep it. We'll just cut it out. Create a new layer. Paste it in. Turn it off. And we'll go ahead and create a new layer. Go to Edit. I mean File and Place. And then we'll Locate clip art folder and look for where we save the flame just flame tiff hit place and we've placed it and as you can see as I'm moving it over the baseball I'll knock the background out you can see oh, well I can't do that can't do the shortcut because I am recording but as you can see the background um, didn't get thrown over, whereas this one did. You can see the white from the drag and drop. So, um, yeah. Other than that, that sets uh, kind of the idea with working with channels and pulling out assets, and um, that kind of gets you started. Hopefully, this helps. Uh, just want to thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and hit subscribe or hit like if you if you enjoyed, and want to, to keep track of all the new tutorials coming out. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>